So, Paul, there's this old Egyptian medical text. It's called the Ebers Papyrus. It dates back to 1550 BC. And by the way, it's called the Ebers Papyrus because it was acquired by a German Egyptologist named George Ebers back in the late 19th century. Anyway, this document, this Egyptian medical document, the Ebers Papyrus, contains 700 magical formulas and folk remedies meant to cure afflictions ranging from crocodile bites to toenail pains. In other words, it's 700 of the first prescription medications. And I'll bet those Egyptians, just like everybody today, is misusing those medications. And we'll talk about that this morning on this edition of Health Matters with Paul Rosen. Well, I don't know if we're going to talk about crocodile bites, but... Well, you, you never know. You know, there could be a crocodile, know. <laughs> a crocodile plague right here in downtown Portland. So we yeah, you, address you, that. you never know where things, where, where things might take us. Are you having second thoughts about taking prescription medications for life? Would you rather use a safer and more natural approach? Well, stay with us, and we'll talk about so many of the conditions that can be handled without medications. Plus, I'll also uh, talk about uh, some foods that you can swap now for healthier choices if we get to it. And we're going to have, as we always do, uh, 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 an interview with one of my patients who was experiencing um, many different symptoms. Oh, including who, diabetes, insomnia, <clears throat> sleep apnea, cholesterol, weight loss, problems with weight loss, also acid reflux, swelling legs and feet. <laughs> this was Patty C, and she had yeah. she had some issues. Quite and a I list. Ha- I assume some of those some of those were related to prescription medications. Uh, she was taking prescription medications for for all of it. I mean, she was on, on quite a list, which is why uh, I chose her for folks to listen to so they know that there is hope. So this particular um, topic, <clears throat> I'm, I'm basically hoping that you folks uh, who are listening that uh, would rather not have to take prescription medications for your various uh, ills and symptoms will be inspired uh, by this and actually do something about it. The premise is this. If you're experiencing some illness or uh, symptomology and you would rather address it risklessly, that is, not participate in the side effects that uh, prescription medications always present you with, then listen closely. Listen closely to uh, why it would be best. And of course, um, ultimately uh, to Patty C, who uh, uh, came to me after, my gosh, seeing so many people and taking so many medications. And we were able to begin the process with her uh, to eliminate them. And, and um, <clears throat> it's very, very cool. Very cool. So it's that's good to see, the it's good to see somebody get results, you know, when they have that big list of issues and maybe find a better way than these prescriptions. And by the way, depending on which source you go to, Paul, it says 60 to 70% of Americans use some kind of prescription medication. Can you believe that? Isn't that wild? That is absolutely incredible in all the wrong ways. That's a lot of yeah. drugs. And, and, and it's interesting, about um, <clears throat> 68% of people use some kind of uh, supplement of some sort. So there's a lot of that stuff out there. And I think there's a real misunderstanding or lack of knowledge about how negative this can be, how your prescription medications can have a bad impact on your general well-being. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about first a few statistics. That's always interesting. It, it gets your attention and kind of grounds the discussion, if you will. So at least 106,000 Americans die each year from the side effects of medications, even when taken as prescribed. Right, that's kind of startling. 
So even if you're not misusing your prescriptions, we have this terrible number of people who are experiencing maybe the final penalty for, for these drugs. That's, that's more Americans die each year from uh, properly prescribed medications than traffic deaths and automobile accidents. That's well, that's horrible. Well, it's startling and it's, it's horrible. That's just a, a nightmarish number. And, uh, you know, various drugs along the way have been approved by the FDA and ultimately done uh, enormous harm. One drug, Vioxx, you'll remember, uh, uh, back a few years was uh, a, a medication for pain, killed 60,000 people before the FDA finally withdrew it. That's hard to get my mind around that number. 60,000 people. Yeah, died from the drug before the FDA was uh, uh, pressed to withdraw that drug. And by the way, that was okayed by the FDA based on studies and whatnot. And I'm not getting into, I don't want to get into the failings of the FDA. That's a whole other show, maybe a whole other five shows. But the bottom line is, is, um, this is just for, you know, contemplation, <laughs> if you will. Right. You Beta know blockers. What? That was taken, Viox was taken off the market only back in 2004. So we're talking about recent history. It's not like oh, yeah. we're, we're discussing things that happened 50 years ago before we knew better. We're still learning, obviously, about the Beta danger of drugs. Beta blockers, which is one class of drugs used to control high blood pressure, has killed over 800,000 people in the last five years. Beta blockers. Yeah. It's blood pressure right. medication. 800,000 people. Again, these numbers are just absolutely startling to me, Paul. I have a hard since, time Since 1999, more than 190,000 Americans have died from overdosing on opioid painkillers. A well-known issue, the problems with opioids. And that, that story in itself is is really horrible beginning back in the 90s that was uh you know it was recent this is recent history in other words yeah um and oftentimes of course you know the pharmaceutical industry and its minions uh will uh, you know sort of put on the oh let's protect the public from supplements which are not o overseen by the fda and yet, of course, this completely uh, flies in the face of the statistics, which say that data shows that adverse reactions to pharmaceutical drugs are 62,000 times more likely to kill you than food supplements. Well, and why is this happening? We know why, because there are huge amounts of money involved. For example, exactly. the company that originally yeah. manufactured OxyContin is owned by a billionaire family. That company is out of business now due to the opioid crisis and the huge number of legal issues arising from that. And the family's doing everything it can to protect its fortune from you know, the, the many, many lawsuits that have been brought against them for their, their carelessness. And saying carelessness is understating, I think. Lawlessness and, might yeah. be more accurate. And, and remember, when, when we're talking supplements, that includes the supplements to enhance, you know, sexual um, function and weight loss um, and, uh, uh, you know, to enhance... Uh, your, your, you know, your body as a whole, muscle building, um, those types of things. And of course, often those types of things, uh, uh, you know, contain one or more small amounts of pharmaceuticals. So, so things like steroids and maybe even Viagra yeah, can cause yeah. kind of, well, well or, not kind of, but definitely negative side effects. Yeah. And those are all lumped in with uh, practitioners like myself who never ever even consider using those things and use only um, uh, herbal formulas that have been in uh, have been known for thousands of years and and whole food supplements 
So when you say they're lumped in, Paul, do you mean we as consumers are confusing the two? We're confusing maybe the yeah, herbal supplements. Supplements, supplements are, are like the, you know, the, the galaxy term. Everything in the galaxy of supplements. But when I say supplement, I don't think of those things. That's not, I mean, I wouldn't consider um, recommending, you know, supplements, uh, you know, in, in those categories. All right. So is there, as you've indicated, let's make sure I'm understanding, is there a healthier alternative to these uh, riskier supplements? Of course. Oh, um, a healthier alternative. Well, I don't want to get in the weeds that, that I, I don't really want to talk about, you know, those, those topics in general. I want to get, um, you know, to some more commonly, uh, you know, I, I, are there other things? Uh, there may be, I don't, that's not part of my practice generally speaking. Okay. I um, guess what I'm referring to is you saying a moment ago that uh, there are herbal, for example, and organic alternatives to some of these supplements that people are taking. Enhance, enhance right. sexual function. Well, I don't know about that. Well, that's what uh, I'm saying. Okay. I was just specifically talking those three categories. Okay. All right, then. I yeah. think, I, I, I think I'm clear on what, on what you're saying. I was saying the point I was trying to make was that all these statistics that, that talk about supplements include the, the category of enhancing sexual function, um, you know, muscle content, bodybuilding, um, uh, and weight loss formulas. Now, of course I do weight loss in my clinic all the time, but, but, but not with, um, uh, you know, the, not, not with weight loss formulas. Right. So maybe, maybe the point I'm taking away from that is, is that these categories you've mentioned aren't normally categories we think of as medications, which may have side effects. In other words, I think people may be Correct. taking these things and not really paying attention to the fact that like any other medication, you may experience a little bit more or a little bit less than you expect. Well, the, op the overwhelming majority of incidents injuries to people occur because of these things. Well, that's not good. The that's sexual enhancers, thing. the energy boosters, the, you know, bodybuilding, the, you know, the weight loss formulas. So even though these if products... someone's going to, if someone's going to have an adverse event, you know, it's, it's likely in those categories. So these products, not I'm sure. Whole food, not whole food, supplements, vitamins, okay, the, minerals. That, that I get, but these other products you've mentioned contain abundant disclaimers, I'm sure, but I think many users oh, sure. just disregard those disclaimers yeah, because they think, well, it's just a steroid or it's a, an enhancement for virility. So what's the harm? I can do that and not have any adverse effects, whereas the truth is, yes, you may. Indeed, indeed. And I only mention that so that people understand that... Um, like in 2014, there was not one single death from a vitamin supplement. Well, Contrast good. that with every single year, properly prescribed medications kill over 100,000 people, you know, every year. And that's not even counting uh, those that may be misused, people misusing their prescriptions. Correct. Saying if uh, one yeah, is good, two may be better. exposure, you know, things like that. Okay. All right. Or just, you know, not using the prescriptions properly. It says one a day, two a day. Some may, you know, figure, well, if I take more, I'll be better. So let's, let's, um, uh, let's look at a uh, one, one class of prescription medications, antibiotics. The argument there is antibiotics, uh, the advent of antibiotics has saved a lot of lives. And, and I, I don't have all the statistics to say that's not true, but I will say um, with respect to trauma and exposure to, uh, you know, like trauma in the battlefield or trauma in, um, you know, accidents of various sorts that occur, um, there's no doubt that, that antibiotics have done some good. The problem is, is they have um, also done quite a bit of, bad. So why is that? Is it, well, is it the in most particular? Common, the most common condition, well, it's it, as science moves forward and discovers that 
killing microbes is not always a good thing, right? Because antibiotics don't just kill the good guys. I mean, the bad guys, they kill the good guys too, as it turns out. And that, of course, as we've spoken many times, undermines your immune system. Remember the, the uh, microbiome. Right. So this, this is just like a flamethrower effect. They're going into your body. And, yeah, it's like, a and nuclear, just... it's like a nuclear device. Okay. So just like nuclear devices, you, use, you should be using them in context and very cautiously. Unfortunately, that hasn't been the case. The most common condition for which antibiotics are dispensed is upper respiratory infections. It accounts for uh, up to 70% of all the antibiotics dispensed. And this, was, this is an old statistic. I, I see this. This is back in 2001. But as is often the case, the condition is not caused by organisms for which the antibiotics are designed to fight, right? And, and shouldn't require antibiotics in the first place. The flu, for example, which is, of course, uh, ultimately a respiratory condition, is a virus. It's caused by a virus for which antibiotics are completely useless. And then there's the argument that, oh, well, yeah, it may not take care of the, uh, you know, the flu bug itself, but uh, what about the secondary infections caused by uh, the result of the flu virus. And there is, there, there is reason to believe that that is a theory, um, uh, you know, which is looking for a home. Is it true in some instances? Absolutely. Is it true across the board? Absolutely not. So, um, and then of course, as you know, antibiotics are, you know, put in the food supply. Put in the food supply? In what capacity is that? I'm not sure I understand. Animals. Animals. Okay, so animals are given antibiotics to keep them healthy. Is that have right? You ever read a, have you ever read a food label on a, on a packaged you know, animal product like chicken or beef or pork? Have you ever, uh, actually, no. That's I don't not know that usually you, among my daily reading. Yeah, so then you should. Like the next time you go shopping, go look at it. And what will I find when I look at that information? Well, you'll find that you'll find some information on the food label that says, for example, this food is, does not contain antibiotics, any antibiotics. So that's a selling point. But I mean, yes. most of us don't know that animals are being fed antibiotics in the first I, place. Don't I know it? Okay. So what negative effect does this have? Let's say I buy you know, a pound of hamburger and that, that cow, uh, the origin of that meat was fed antibiotics. Why should I be concerned about that? Well, those, those um, chemicals all have, you know, various lifespans, they call them half-lives or whatnot. And you, you, uh, there, there is a possibility of you consuming the antibiotic, of course, to a very, very low grade degree, but these things are cumulative. Why would you? Why would you want to? Let's put it this way. The food industry has been convinced that this is a bad idea, and that's why it's a selling point. <laughs> So are they giving them antibiotics or not? Well, uh, not, the, not the meat that I eat. Okay, so... You have a choice. So I see. So just like as with everything else, the organic Be aware. Food, you are now forewarned. Okay, but uh, again, until now, I, I wasn't even aware of this issue, and I, I, I suspect I'm not alone. I no, even I, know. I, I'm certain you're not. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't even have known to look for that. If, if say, I looked at, you know, uh, an organically produced pound of hamburger, and it said contains no antibiotics, I would say, well, that's nice, but does that mean that the other type of hamburger does? And from what you're telling me, the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, even the mainstream processors have jumped on the bandwagon, right, with with respect to antibiotics. Um, but <clears throat> you need to look on the food label. When you buy meat, meat is potentially one of the um, more toxic containing foods that, that, that you might consume. So you want to get the cleanest meat that you can. That's why I talk about, um, uh, you know, organically, uh, 
raised. The feed that's used is non-GMO, comes from organic sources, uh, does not contain pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides, does not contain um, genetically modified uh, organisms in them, does not contain antibiotics or any additives whatsoever. All of that can be all of that can be found on the label itself. Look for it. So the same principle across the board. What the animal may be eating is what you may eat eventually. Indeed. Okay. Isn't that true? Uh, it's true and horrifying and something we should be aware of. Hey, something we haven't mentioned yet, get healthy at acunatural.com. Get healthy at acunatural.com. You can reach Paul there. 24-7 and ask questions. Send Paul a question and we can answer it here on the show on Health Matters with Paul Rosen. Yeah, and, and also, again, stay tuned for uh, Patty C's testimonial. Learn how she started the process of handling an enormous list of, of uh, symptoms, which uh, diabetes, insomnia, sleep apnea, leg cramps, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, acid reflux, all of these she was taking medications for and ultimately um, learned that she could jettison them. So stay, and, tuned for, stay tuned for that as well. We'll get to that momentarily. And to state the obvious, Paul, she was taking different medications for all those conditions. Those medications are interacting with each other. You have this stew yes, of toxic indeed. substances going into your body. So you have to be concerned about not only the side effects of one medication, but how all those medications can mix together and create some kind of combustible problem and they in do. your system. And they do. And the FDA does not actually um, uh, set up tests for those. Meaning if a physician is going to put together a diuretic with a, uh, with a, a blood pressure medication and um, a blood thinner and uh, anyway, you know, the, and, and this is diabetic with, with uh, say metformin. And so there, there, there aren't any, examples of testing and the, you know, evidentiary, you know, data points for what happens when you do all this. Right. Right. So that's why I often say that anybody who's taking more than one medication is a guinea pig. I don't know from what I'm hearing. If you take any medication in effect, you're a guinea pig. Well, I, okay, fine. But definitely more than one. <laughs> Okay. And, and again, with uh, your patient, Patty C., and with many other consumers, unfortunately, they may be taking a fistful of different medications oh, yeah. every day because they're trying to deal with multiple problems. And the fact that they're... So let's get... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no. The very fact that they're, to restate the point, the very fact that they're taking so many medications is in itself a problem. Yeah. Yeah. And let's get back to the antibiotic thing. So oftentimes then... Um, uh, ear infections is an is a, is another area where, uh, especially in children, are given antibiotics for. But really, it turns out that um, that um, the 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 real cause of chronic ear infections, at least this is what I've discovered in my clinic, is often weak heart physiology. Now, who would make that connection? That you are well, you 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 wouldn't unless you were being open to it and you noticed it in your in your clinic. So is this... I say that because whenever I address, whenever I supplement nutritionally for heart health, the, um, the ear infections disappear. And don't well, that's return. pretty amazing. Is that mostly with children or does it apply across the well, board? Well, ear infections, uh, no, it applies across the board, but ear infections are more predominant in kids than they are in, in, in adults. So that's where you're more likely to find the issue, obviously, among those patients who are more likely to experience the problem. Mm -hmm. Antibiotics are just one, one prescription medication, right? And then, of course, we mentioned earlier that antibiotics literally kill both the positive and negative bacteria, positive bacteria that um, we need in order to, for example, uh, produce vitamin B. So by trying to fix one problem, you're creating other problems in your body. Again, because these antibiotics, some of them don't discriminate. They just take out everything. So then, then we get to uh, painkillers, things like Tylenol, ibuprofen, things like that. 
So these are easily available. They're over the counter. Why could they be harmful? Because <laughs> they kill people. <laughs> and some of the side effects include um, uh, undermining the liver function and undermining kidney function. Again, effects that most of us would never think to associate with those particular medications, which are easily available. Anybody can go down to their grocery store, pull them off the shelf and take them home. Yeah, and, and, and many people take them because of the pain. They take them at dosages, which are extreme. These drugs can cause gastrointestinal bleeding, heart attacks, you know, um, and, and, uh, and as I said, can even damage uh, healthy livers and kidneys. All right, but I, I think many people may take a fistful of Tylenol, for example, because they take one or two and experience some temporary relief from what ails them, let's say a headache. So they, they just abuse it. They take more feeling that more pills will bring more relief. Yeah. Hearing loss is another interesting side effect from common over-the-counter uh, over pain relievers. Again, a, a, a symptom or, or something you could experience that I think most of us would never side think. A side yeah. effect that most of us yeah. would, never, would never conjure would happen from just taking aspirin. Exactly. Exactly. And th these are just two classes of medications. I mean, and we talk about blood pressure medications. I mentioned the beta blockers, for example, earlier. Um, and, and, and they have various side effects, including undermining heart function, believe it or not. If anything bad can happen, it will happen with medications. That's what it sounds when, like to me. When, when, when I look at um, medications for migraines, for example, one of the side effects of migraine medication is migraines. <laughs> oh, the irony, right? And that's honestly true for most medications. If you look at the side effects, you can see that some people actually experience the symptom that um, the medication was originally prescribed for. Well, does that need for them mean for them that they need a, a different medication, something more powerful? Or I, I can guess what your answer is going to be. Maybe right. maybe right. they need well, you know a third alternative, something that's correct. not a more I mean, powerful medication. Again, this this whole topic that we're talking here is essentially me trying to in inspire you folks to think whether or not you want to live with taking medications for the rest of your life. And in some cases, like my wife, some of those she's going to have to take for the rest of her life because of anatomical um, abnormalities. But many, many, many people including Patty C and so many of the hundreds of people that I've seen that are taking medications for chronic issues like migraines, like diabetes, like high blood pressure, uh, like acid reflux, and the list goes on. They simply, there, there is a safe, effective, natural alternative that will address the underlying root cause. And by all means, if that's available to you, maybe that's something you should be considering. Well, that, that's the point. The point is, um, dear listener, are you one of those people? Uh, uh, would you rather not, would you rather not um, uh, embrace the potential for side effects? And uh, would you rather uh, utilize something that is safer and obviously addressing, that will address the underlying root cause issue? Well, here's one way to get started. Are get you? healthy. Get healthy at AccuNatural.com. Get healthy at ACUNatural.com. Health Matters with Paul Rosen. That's what we're doing right now. Well, we're halfway through the show, Paul. Is it about time we heard from your patient, Patty C? Patty C, I think so. I think that would really be uh, inspirational for people. Um, and, uh, you know, rather than me rail on and on, let's hear from someone who uh, discovered the type of work that I do and uh, took the challenge. And, um, uh, you know, she was experiencing diabetes, insomnia, sleep apnea, leg cramps, high blood pressure, cholesterol issues, uh, acid reflux, uh, even several others. My gosh, a list that would cripple King Kong. Uh, so let's hear part one, Patty C. How did you 
how did you hear about um, nutrition response testing in the first place? Well, I've been hearing a lot of things and reading a lot of books throughout the years, and I happened to turn on your radio program one Sunday morning, and you were talking with a patient, and a lot of things he described were things that I was feeling. We were both about the same age, and I've tried many, many different things and decided, why not go ahead and call your toll-free number and go listen to one of your talks and see what it's all about. So you said you'd, you'd tried many, many different things. What what? Um, Weight Watchers, and then years ago, Nutrisystem, but I gained it all back. Um, I never really tried diet pills. I've tried some exercising, and just things weren't working, and I go in and think, well, this food's good, or that food's good, and then that wasn't working, and then I would just quit, give up, and then thought, what am I going to do? I just happened to listen to your program one Sunday morning. It sounds, gosh, it sounds like, you know, so many stories out there, Mm -hmm. exactly the same. Now, you're at, so... What you're describing is your major focus was weight loss. Right, initially. Yeah, Yeah, initially. And yet, you're a diabetic. Yeah, and I never even took that into account with the high blood pressure, too, that that was part of the problem. It's like, well, maybe something different's got to work for me. Isn't isn't that wild? I mean, I I tell you, I have that happen so often Mm -hmm. where people sort of have a focus. You know, I want to get rid of the skin rash or my hair is falling out and I want to, you know, I want to stop that or or I, I'd like to lose weight and, I, and I'm not losing weight. Or, and yet the foundation, the foundation of the health of your body is crumbling dramatically. Yeah, that's what I was feeling like too. And you had other symptoms as well, didn't you? Um, yeah, I had uh, high blood pressure and with diabetes as well. And I just wasn't sleeping well. I've got sleep apnea. Um, acid reflux was bothering me a lot at night. Uh, leg cramps um, were really kind of getting me a, two or three times I'd get up in the middle of the night with bad, bad leg cramps. And I figured I've got to do something to try to figure out what's going on. And every time I go in the doctor's office, well, here, take this pill or take that pill. Well, that's not working. Yeah, and, long term. and 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 you you had you, you had like leg and feet swelling as well. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that was big time. Yeah, that was that was big time. And of course, you had you know body pain, right? Um, neck. Low, lower back, my neck, right? Sh- shoulders, right? So here's this whole laundry laundry list of of ailments or right, symptoms anyway. Yeah, and um and the thing on your mind is weight loss. How how common do you think that is out there? Very, very common because I hear all my coworkers talk about all the time, I've got to lose weight to take care of it, and yet they were still kind of in the same boat as me. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, it's like, like looking uh, like you're in a, a boat with a, with a uh, you know, a giant, giant hole in the hull, <laughs> you know, taking on water like nobody's business, but you notice that the, you know, the boat needs a paint job. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then a couple of my doctors said, well, take this diet pill, and like, well, then my blood pressure will start to go up. I said, well, that's not working. Meanwhile... You're you're being plied with all different kinds of drugs, right? Exactly. Drugs like like what what sort of drugs? Drugs for what? Uh, my high blood pressure I was taking um, venazapril, and then with my I've got I was on four different types of diabetes medication, and with your help I've dropped one of them. But Actos and metformin and uh, Bieta, that's taken by injection, and um, another. Uh, HCT along with the high blood pressure medication because my legs were swelling up, but then it seemed like the problem got worse. So it's like I was taking a double dose of that. Right. So anyway, medication upon medication upon exactly. medication. And symptoms are basically with the medication only, you're improving dramatically? Oh, yeah. Definitely. My, I don't have my leg cramps. No, with the, oh. with, the, with, the, with the drugs. We're not talking about on the program yet. So with the drugs, you're you're improving dramatically. Of course, the no. answer to that question is no. No, just... you're not. You're you're managing your symptoms with exactly. the drugs. Exactly. Yeah. But but basically, you're going nowhere. Exactly. You're going nowhere. And if you look at the side effects of the drugs that you were taking, did you ever go back and take a look and see what the side effects are of some of these medications? Yeah. In fact, in one of my. Uh, uh endocrinologist of my diabetes doctor wanted to get me on uh, cholesterol medication, even though my cholesterol was pretty good. I started taking it, and all of a sudden I noticed I had horrid cramps in my legs and my arms, and 
I looked at the side effects on this and started looking at oh, you know, potential liver damage, you know, long term. It's like, oh my gosh, I, I can't take that anymore. That's Patty C., Paul's patient here on Health Matters with Paul Rosen. Again, Patty had a whole big list of stuff she was dealing with. And as she just indicated, she took some diabetes medication, for example, among all the other medications she was taking. And Paul, she immediately suffered adverse side effects. Yeah. And, um, you know, she finally got to the point where she was, as she said, she, she heard me <clears throat> on uh, uh, doing my radio show and she was inspired to, to look for uh, a safer alternative. And, uh, and she reached out and, you know, bada boom, um, she, she, she took up the mantle, the adventure, and, uh, you know, she began to already start to see some improvements, right? But, but the interesting point that she makes is that she's on all these medications and they may be managing the symptoms, but she still feels like Drek, right? Right. So, so that's really a problem. Hey, I just wanted to mention too, uh, perhaps you can let people know how they can ask questions and whatnot should they want to reach out uh, to me. Well, that's easy. All you have to do is write to get healthy at acunatural.com. Get healthy at acunatural.com. Of course, you can send that message 24 7. You can ask Paul any health related question, and we may address it right here on the show. And this particular podcast, if you miss some or you want to turn somebody else on to it, uh, is um, uh, placed on various platforms, and they are. Uh, you can find it on Paul's Facebook page. That's AccuNatural Family Healthcare on Facebook. Also on Paul's webpage, AccuNatural.com, A-C-U-Natural.com. Click on the podcast tab and you'll find those. And soon we'll be on YouTube even. You can find us there too. So uh, yeah, we are doing everything we can to get the word out and to reach out as much as possible. So let's, let's uh, continue with Patty C. And have you ever looked at the side effects of your blood pressure medication or your, your diabetes drugs? Um, yes. They say can cause dizziness, um, can cause nausea. Um, those are two of the biggest ones. Two of the biggest ones. And, of course, you have experienced both of those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here you are, you know, following, following exactly what your doctor's advice are, right. which, which, of course, you know, you're, you're, you're doing because you believe that he or she knows what they're doing. Exactly. And in all fairness to them, they are following their standard of care. Right. Whether or not the standard of care is actually, you know, really appropriate. Exactly. <laughs> right. And um, essentially, their, their, their um, a nutritional advice to you, all these professionals that you're working with, their nutritional advice to you is? Um, go ahead and take the medications, and this will make you get better. You know, watch your dietary intake of what you eat. Yeah, just watch your dietary. That's like, you know, it's like st standing by the highway and like watching traffic. Oh, gee, hey, there goes another candy bar. There goes, exactly. a, there goes a donut. There goes, you know, um, you know anyway, what, whatever. And don't worry about it because you can always take more Actos or more Metformin or, you know, right. uh, you know, if on insulin, more insulin and everything will be fine. Or drink more water. Or drink more water. That's that was a big thing. So you're not drinking enough water. Right. Okay. So so what's happening there is you are following this advice. Right. And the experience that you're having is essentially you watching yourself swirl down the drain. That's what I was starting to feel like. Yeah. So you know anybody else who is also following that same advice? Any other friends? Any other colleagues? Any other? Uh, well, my mom and dad, you know, with their different uh, ailments that they have. Uh, my mom had a stroke, and so then it's always, you know, take more medications. Right. And, and any, I mean, any, anybody else? Any, in other words, what I'm getting at is, is you can watch people take the same path to the same place. Exactly. Which is slow but sure deterioration, ultimately ending up in the kidney dialysis ward or something like I always thought of it as kind of like a slow trip, you know, down suicide. Yeah. Very, very slow moving, but that's where I felt like I was headed. How could that be? How could that be medical care? What, what, what is that? I mean, how can we even accept that as useful, you know, um, yeah. uh, I mean, in, in information? I guess that's what you grew up with and what you believe. Exactly. So you never think to think outside the box. 
or you you listen to read different books and like, well, that just sounds too weird and out of the way. I, just, I can't do that. Yeah, something like what I'm talking about. Um, and you know, it, you be, ha- before I met you, yes. Yeah, <laughs> and, and 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 you and you had like you said, you you had all different kinds of tests. You had the 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 blood tests. Oh and yeah. You had the anyway. What other tests? And they're all revealing this, that, and something else. Something I said in the that I always say in the initial. Um, uh, uh, monologue that I do at the beginning of every show is that <clears throat> for people who get blood tests, for example, and they know that they're suffering and nothing shows up in the blood work. Exactly. Um, that's one thing. But for people who actually do have something going on and it does show up in the blood work, I wanted to address that because what that is is the manifestation of a forest fire. Okay. So beforehand, when you just have a few symptoms, because you've had some of these symptoms way before you were diagnosed with diabetes. Right, right. Right? So it wasn't showing up in the blood work. No, it would come back normal. Right. Yet you had some of these symptoms. Exactly. So by ignoring these symptoms or only using methodologies to suppress them, such as medications, what you were experiencing is what most everybody else experiences, right. and that is a slow, slippery ride to nowhere. Exactly. Yeah. To nowhere. So, what was it about what you heard on the radio show? If you can, if you can pinpoint it, it would be so uh, revealing to me. Um, it just what that caller was talking about. It just resonated with me that, wow, I've, I've been going through that myself too. Um, that if I don't do something now, then it's just going to get worse and worse and worse, and to get more meds into me, and like then I'm going to end up in some type of critical care, it's like, I don't want to do that either. So, so I mean, and, and I don't mean to, to, you know, to beat the dead horse, as it were. Okay. But what I want you to do is, what, I mean, is it just that you were ready? I know a lot of people say that. Well, I was ready to do something different. Or, what you know, I mean, I know what it was for me. I'll show you what, what it okay. was for me. For me, I was so sick, I was almost dead. I didn't have a choice. It was either find something or, you know, I'm out of here. That's Paul chatting with his patient, Patty C., on Health Matters with Paul Rosen. Wow, what a story. And it addresses entirely our topic this morning, Paul, prescription yeah. medications and how her cocktail of medications was really just knocking her for a loop in a way she didn't anticipate. And it's so important to hear it from, you know, someone who's who uh, m- may uh, certainly may not be seen as someone who's you know, trying to run a business or something like that. It's, um, you know, as we were speaking before we started this, uh, people are inspired by other people taking this, you know, step into the unknown, which is to, uh, you know, start utilizing this nutrition response testing and muscle testing, um, you know, and, and seeing somebody like me who's been doing this for, creeping up on 30 years, um, helping people just like Patty C, uh, you know, get out from under uh, the, the uh, prescription medication shuffle uh, and start to, uh, you know, get a life back, get a real quality of life back. Um, and, and, and that's what I'm trying to do for, for you folks is, is, you know, is, is inspire you to recognize that, um, uh, most of the time, medications that you're taking that are setting you up to be taken for a lifetime just simply don't have to happen. And the other thing I will say is this, if you come to see me and I do the evaluation and I determine that I can't help you, I will tell you. I'll tell you before we talk about a program or anything else. I'll just say, you know, when you come back for your, what we call report of findings, um, after I've done my evaluation and assessed uh, uh, you know, the potential outcome or not. Um, I'll, I'll just let you know, hey, you know what? Uh, I can't help you. That's as fair as you can be. Shall we continue with Patty's story? Let's do it. Here we go. It was, you know, I finally got to the point where I'd hit that telephone pole and I was not getting up, literally. And that was the problem. So um, what, 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 what about in your case? My case, it would be that my symptoms, that I was starting to get like dizzy and sometimes I felt I was going to pass out. And my medications were like my high blood pressure medication. My doctor gave me the benazapril, and then my legs just started swelling up bad. Well, here, let's take another, uh, I think it's hydrochlorothiazide. 
add that to it. I said, well, that's already in the medication. Well, here's like a double dose. But then my legs, I could just feel, just kept tightening and getting bigger and bigger. And it's like, well, that's not helping. It's not taking the swelling down. Yeah, things are going nowhere. Yeah. yeah th- figured, things are going nowhere fast. Yeah, something's, I knew something had to change or I would be just on these meds the rest of my life. And I want to get off of them. And so you, you came, you heard the message. Yes. You know. Got to do something different. You got to step outside of your comfort zone. You got to reach outside of the right. box, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. My message, and it's always my message on these shows, is you've got to get evaluated. You have to find out what your personal nutritional deficiencies and barriers to healing are. Right. Which you did. I, yeah. I was amazed. <laughs> you came, you got evaluated. Was the evaluation painful? No, no, not at all. Was it unusual? I was skeptical, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> As you know, I wrote about it yeah. in my book, The Great Health Heist. So you were skeptical, but you were willing. Yeah, I was just willing, like, you know, I've, I've got to make a change. I've got to make a change. So you, you came, you got the evaluation. I presented you with a nutritional healing program. Right. And at that point, you looked at it and said, okay, I'm going to do this. Right. I figured that if I don't take control of this now, well, when? That, that was my big thing is when am I going to turn that around? And I think it was one of your talks was you, you just got to make your mind up to do it. Yeah. You actually did come to a, 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 um, a seminar. Yeah. As I, as I, I just remember. wanted to see what, because you're, it just resonated with me. That it sounded interesting. I thought, I'm going to go see what he has to say. So this was before you actually came in, right? Yes. Uh-huh. Right. So what did you hear there that, that um, you know, that just resonated with you? And- um, that the, you can turn things around. And a good friend of mine, we've talked years and years about nutrition, and she's always been bugging me. You, you've got to turn stuff around. And I thought, well, okay. Brushed her, <laughs> brushed her side. Yeah, yeah, turn it around. Um, what, are you, what, what are you talking about? But I really, she's right that. I, just the food choices. I was making poor food choices. Yeah, and especially for a diabetic. Right. And 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 uh, um, you know the, the the recipe for the diabetic is something that I'm going to um, uh, talk about in the uh, you know when we come back from a break, but not not quite yet. Um, so so you got the evaluation. Right. And you started on your program, mm-hmm. and it wasn't so easy in the beginning. No, because I still wanted to go. Sugar was, we talked about and sugar addict. I, that was true. Um, in fact, I was talking to my mom years ago, and even when I was a little kid, my mom said they put caro syrup in our baby's bottles before we went to bed. It's like, so you've got me hooked on sugar when I was a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want to make her feel guilty, but yeah. I just have always, it's just sugar. Yeah, yeah. And that's basically what happens is... You know, you, you, you start it right from the beginning. In fact, as it turns out, it happens even before that. Because we are a manifestation of what our parents basically consumed themselves oh. since day one. Now, the most, obvious, the most obvious thing about that, everybody's accepted fetal alcohol syndrome, for example. Okay. But there's so much about, uh, you know, a parent's um, digestive tract that ends up affecting us the weaker, the more torn down, the more degenerated their own digestive tract becomes, the more um, effect it has on us before we even enter, uh, you know, uh, the airspace. Wow. And so, and this is, this is proven over and over and over, over and over and over. In fact, uh, the, the hottest diet right now for everybody is called the GAPS diet, G-A-P-S I hadn't heard that one. And that's basically the, the fundamental basis of the whole thing, is, is squaring around the digestive system and, and, and ways to do that, um, and such great information about it. However, one-size-fits-all diet is not going to work for everybody, and, right. and, and, and you, you, you agree with that. Oh, I do, yeah. Why? Because everybody's different. I mean, I could, you know, like, uh, like with my sister, I tried, was getting her on my program with you, and, and there's things on there where she can have the sugar and stuff where I can't. Or she had allergic reactions to, like, dyes and perfumes where I don't have that. So with your testing, you kind of pinpoint it and figure out what specifically is for that individual person, and that seems to be helping. Again, that's Patty C., Paul's patient on Health Matters with Paul Rosen. The most striking thing about that, Paul, to me, was the anecdote about her mother putting a sweetener in yeah, her Carol, formula. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And kids wow. are, you know, it's constant. Kids are, are raised from, you know, infants with juice. 
you know, fr uh, fruit juices of various. Right, things. right. And I, I think there's only been awareness, you tell me, in the past 20 or 30 years about how sweetened up juices are. And that's one reason, in fact, why orange juice has experienced a dramatic drop in sales. People won't Absolutely. drink it with their, with their breakfast anymore because yeah. they've come to realize that, you know, it's full of sweetener. Yeah. Yeah. You, making juice from fruit is really um, not such a great idea in general. Hmm. You want and to eat been, a piece of fruit, eat a piece of fruit. Yeah, there you but, go. I, um, I think we've been sold on this idea, though, that yeah. juices, uh, fruit juices in particular, are good for us. But not only do you have the natural sweetener in there, but I'm sure those commercial fruit juices that we buy probably have additional sweeteners. Uh, generally speaking, unless they're 100%, you know, unless you're, they, they declare 100%, you know, fruit juice. So. All right. Well, we have time for one more uh, segment from Patty C. If we want to wrap up her story. Wow, that was fast. It was fast. We, we, did we do four segments already? Uh, yeah, I think it'll be a total of four by the time we hear this one. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, then let's just go right to the end. <laughs> there were some, some uh, you know, radical side effects with your nutritional healing program. And you were talking about one with respect to your oral care. Oh, yeah. Um, years ago, my... Uh... I had bone loss, and my dentist uh, was trying to figure out what was going on, and then he finally said, have you ever been tested for diabetes? And I said, no, and every time I go to the doctor, my blood tests come out that my blood sugars are normal, so no one ever pursued it. Because I really think he should be tested, and that's, that's when I, I found out. Yeah, that's when you found out your diabetes. But then now, you know, fast forward, okay, you've got, you're a full-blown diabetic, and things are crashing, and, and now you're on a nutritional healing program, and things are... Are, uh, turning are turning around. And one of the things was? Uh, your coconut oil that you recommended to me to go ahead and, and try that and just kind of work it through your, your mouth, uh, you know, once or twice a day. And I went into the dentist about three weeks after I started taking it, and he noticed that there was significant less um, bone loss. Significant less bone loss. Yeah. He, was that... he was surprised because he thought that it was progressing, and but I had good home dental health He should be surprised. He should be. It doesn't surprise me yeah. because that is exactly what happens when you put together a nutritional healing program along with some of the, um, uh, you know, actions like uh, uh, swishing with, uh, you know, high quality coconut oil. Yeah. He did right. said, well, what are you doing for yourself? And I mentioned about your program. And exactly. he says, well, that seems to be working in your favor. And what? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's working in your favor. Oh, God. You mean all this drilling and mercury and, 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 and all that stuff is, you know, not, not helping much? Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, and one thing, too, is when we were talking that I went in, I had a bad toothache, and the, and the dentist said, well, we're going to give you a, a root canal. And then you and I talked about it. It's like, oh, I don't want to do that if I don't need to. So when I started doing the coconut oil, it just like went away. Bing, and, bing, bang, boom. Because yeah. it's all connected. The, your, your teeth, your gums, your mouth is connected to your digestive system. That's what I'm learning. And that is all about nutrition. So what are the other symptoms that, that uh, you know, have, have improved since you've, since you've been, uh, you know, besides the swelling of the legs and so forth? Uh, my lower back doesn't hurt as much. Um, I'm able to sleep a little bit better, a few more hours per night. What's um, that worth? A lot. <laughs> I have less brain fog because I've been able to sleep at night. Um, right. And then uh, when I start to get a cold, we talked about a couple of the medication, I mean, the supplements to put them together. And then instead of taking all the cold pills and the medicines, taking those supplements helped. Helped a lot. It did. Yeah. I just was surprised on, on how quickly the cold cleared up. Nutrition, nutrition comes to the rescue once again. Exactly. And then uh, the leg cramps. Oh, those are horrid. I would wake up two or three times during the night. And how and, about now? Uh, maybe once a week. Once a week. Yeah. So we're we're you're you're a work in progress. Exactly. We're we're, we're a team working in, in 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 progress, right? Right. And and you have you have had some experiences where, and we got to do this kind of quickly, but you've had some experiences where you you uh, well, first of all, did I force you to stop all grains and all fruit and all sugar right from the get go? No, I, I had to make that decision to do it for myself. But wasn't it? I mean, didn't I even even suggest a, a, a gradient or, or or a sort of a step by step to do that? You did. Yeah. And and when you, you know, as you were doing it, right, the right. closer you got to no grains, no fruit, no sugar, what happened? I started feeling better. I, I was amazed. And when you, because you've had times where, you know, 
Uh, you've uh, either been put in social situations, fell off the wagon, or, or you fell off the it. wagon on your. You said you paid for it. What What does that mean? Um, well, the one time was when my legs gave out on me and I fell and went to the doctor and they ran blood tests, couldn't figure it out, and then you started testing me. It's like, oh, okay, sugar, I had fruit. So what that did was you yeah. lost your. You actually lost blood pressure. Right. Right, and you fell, and folks, that's all about your adrenal glands. Right. And that is one of the main areas that needs to be addressed for all diabetics yeah, is adrenal glands. I love fruit, and I really got to stop myself. It's like, okay, if I have it now, then I'm just taking a step backwards. I'm helping improve myself. Why is that important to you? Um, because I don't want to get stuck in a situation where I have to rely on other people to take care of me or if I get sick and have to go to the hospital, that's more money. It's yeah. Just, if I don't take care of myself, who will? But that's how I have to look at it. So, so I, I, I guess, I mean, in the end, in the end, um, what, what, what's it all worth to you to know that there actually is a solution? Great peace of mind, um, feeling better about hopeful for the future instead of thinking, well, what's going to happen now that I'm never going to find anything to get better? And to me, that's, that's wonderful. And, and that's affected you how? Um, I feel happier onto it now. I, you know, I relate better to people. By the way, no grains, no fruit, no sugar. Uh, just a little background, actually very little. Uh, any diabetic, especially type 2, who, who wants to get off their medication and really begin to start turning their body around, absolutely cannot have any grains, any fruit, any sugar. There's refined sweeteners. There's no discussion if you're not willing to do that. Ultimately, don't come see me. Won't be helpful for you. And definitely, if you can avoid prescription medications, do that. There are alternatives. Find out more. Get healthy at AccuNatural.com. Get healthy at ACUNatural.com. Again, you can write to Paul 24-7 at that address. Ask your questions. Talk about your issues. AccuNatural.com itself, ACUNatural.com, is a great source of additional information. And I think that's it for this week, Paul. We've wrapped up the show. Next week, are you struggling with mental fog, forgetfulness, or poor memory? The irony is that the media and medicine have convinced you that the best brain food is harmful. What is this food? Plus, the top seven foods for brain health. Remember, you ate your way to illness and you can eat your way to wellness. It's the food, folks. Keep yours fresh. <laughs> 